For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. I'm used to debating evolution, so it's good to change it up once in a while. So uh, let's get started then. Debate, did dinosaurs or could dinosaurs have lived with man? Now, when I look at this picture, when I think of Jurassic Park, I sometimes assume that the evolutionists think of Jurassic Park and the massive T-Rex and all the commotion and tyranny that it um, caused um, when they think of dinosaurs and living with man. Therefore, they think it to be impossible. And it's pretty common for evolutionists to make the claim that since many dinosaurs were gigantic and dangerous, they couldn't have possibly lived with humans, as people would be easy prey for them. What the evolutionists don't acknowledge, however, is that according to their own timeline, humans have lived with plenty of large, dangerous animals over thousands of years, many of which are now extinct. Look at my slides here. We see the woolly mammoth and the American mastodon, with the same size as modern elephants, as well as this extinct relative of the Komodo dragon, which was likely encountered by the early settlers of Australia. Now, these, these types of animals would have proved to be a significant threat to people if anybody got close to them, and yet humans were still able to work around them, and in some cases hunt them. If you acknowledge that humans coexisted with these animals, it isn't that big of a step to suggest humans live with dinosaurs, many of which were the same size or smaller than the animals listed in these slides. Here we can see the auroch, the short-faced bear, glyptodonts. Um, these, even according to the evolutionists, all lived with man. Evolutionists have hijacked dinosaurs and used them to teach millions of years of evolution. When you start with the Bible, dinosaurs start to make a lot of sense. You see the geologic column here. Can man and dinosaur coexist? Well, when we look to the Bible, dinosaurs and man, according to our model, did not live in the same habitat. Just like today, we see that different creatures and different animals live in different habitats. In the pre-flood world, we see certain fossils that are usually buried together, and dinosaur fossils are usually buried with gymnosperms, pines, and naked sea plants, whereas mammal fossils are usually buried with things such as flowering plants. What does this actually indicate? This indicates two different ecosystems. For example, since we're talking about dinosaurs here, although lived at the same time of man, did not necessarily live in the same areas or habitats. They were overcome by the flood at different times during the advancing of the waters, which does explain why we don't find them buried together. It is evident that as the floodwaters rose, they buried organisms in the order that they were encountered. The accepted major groups known in the fossil record are explained by their appearance according to where they lived and not when they lived. So we looked at burial by ecosystems and habitats. Now, we can actually look to geology, which does point to a watery cataclysm. Much geologic evidence suggests rapid plate tectonics. This isn't the topic of the debate, but when we look to the layering and we look to the dinosaurs and, and where they're found, we can also look to the flood to confirm that. Uh, so man and dinosaur could obviously coexist, but the question is, did they? We looked at dinosaurs in the Bible. Why don't we see the word dinosaur in the Bible? I hear this question from evolutionists all the time. Well, the word dinosaur is a modern word invented in 1841. The King James Version of the Bible, on the other hand, was translated in 1611. The word dinosaur did not exist at the time the King James Bible was translated, obviously. And so it's not surprising that we would not find the word dinosaur in the Bible. We also don't find the word computer in the Bible either. Dragons. We do find the word dragon in the Bible. These giant creatures known as dinosaurs were simply called dragons. Sightings of dragons slash dinosaurs have been documented and recorded throughout history. Eyewitnesses from all cultures around the earth, from England to China, have legends and stories about dragons. There are even more than 20 references to dinosaurs in the Bible. This whole controversy could easily have been avoided if they had just called dinosaur bones dragon bones. 
we see that the evidence that humans knew about dinosaurs before the science of paleontology was founded. So we see accurate artwork depicting dinosaurs and allegedly extinct creatures is observed, proving that ancient people saw living dinosaurs. The evolutionary community is baffled and surprised when plants and animals assumed to have gone extinct the same time as the dinosaurs are suddenly found to be alive. These are known as living fossils. The coelacanth comes to mind. Here's a picture of the coelacanth. The evidence. Dinosaurs have been documented in history by eyewitnesses such as Marco Polo, Herodotus, and Alexander the Great. There exists today a multitude of cave drawings, mosaics, sculptures, and paintings of dinosaurs from ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, Cambodia, Europe, Australia, all over the earth. Here's a picture here that was drawn, I believe, in Utah. This picture here, Bishop Bell's dinosaur. In the 15th century, we have Bishop Bell's tomb. We know when he died, and so we know how old this is, and this is much, much before dinosaur fossils have really been found. Not until the 1800s were dinosaur fossils actually found in Bali. We find carved animals in this tomb, and some of these animals, as you've seen, look exactly like dinosaurs, sauropod dinosaurs to be exact. Many of the carved animals are animals alive today, plus dinosaurs. What more proof do you need? We know there are countless legends of lake monsters and thousands of testimonies. Was everybody lying? That's what the evolutionist is gonna have to do. People clearly knew about dinosaurs. I just had to pick a few here, uh, but there's tons. You can look at them uh, yourselves. People have obviously always known about dinosaurs if they drew them. It's, con it's conclusive evidence, really. The evidence is clear. Man coexisting with dinosaurs is obvious after looking at the overwhelming amount of evidence. The evidence is staggering due to the endless artifacts, drawings, carvings, statues, mosaics, and depictions throughout history of various dinosaurs or other thought to be extinct animals. We look to the Bible, we hear of a sea moth who had a tail like a cedar tree. People who have to hold to that evolutionary worldview, they'll say things like the he moth was obviously a hippo or an elephant. We can go through this, but obviously um, where the Bible says he moves his tail like a cedar. Well, if you've looked at an elephant and a hippo's tail looks nothing like a cedar. Uh, for sake of time, I'll move on here. Um, it's all based on their worldview when people say behemoth cannot be a, a dinosaur. We see historical accounts, um, St. George killing a dragon, Beowulf, Alexander the Great. Uh, we even see it in empirical scientific evidence, soft tissue and dino bones, you know, new scientific findings have revealed amazingly preserved dinosaur bones, which contain soft tissues, flexible uh, blood vessels and intact cells. This indicates these bones are thousands of years old and not millions. I mean, we see stories all around the earth. Oakley Abembe, look at that. Yes, there is plenty of evidence that dinosaurs lived with man and even went on Noah's Ark. All you have to do is mention the word dinosaur on Noah's Ark or dinosaurs living with man in say recent times will lead to scoffing from the atheist, from the evolutionist. But the fact is this evidence of dinosaurs living with man and that the Bible's history of this universe is accurate is overwhelming. There's actual historic, scientific, and even eyewitness evidence, ample evidence for this. And the fact is, is that more and more evidence actually continues to be discovered, which actually proves that everything we've been taught about dinosaurs is absolutely wrong. Dinosaurs have been documented in history by eyewitnesses. A few examples that come to mind are Alexander the Great, Marco Polo, Herodotus. You can look for yourself. There exists massive amounts of cave drawings, mosaics, paintings, scriptures, sculptures of dinosaurs from ancient Egypt, Cambodia, Europe, Australia, North America, pretty much all over the earth. And in the scripture, we see the description of dinosaur-like animals, Leviathan, Behemoth. The word dragon is used over and over again. And these sculptures, mosaics, paintings, cave drawings that I talk about, 
you can actually go see them yourself. We even have documentation of the existence of completely fresh, non-fossilized dinosaur bones. What is unfortunate is that people have been brainwashed, and not only brainwashed, but conditioned to believe that these dinosaurs are actually prehistoric animals, beasts that lived until about 65 million years ago. But the fact is, these evolutionary scientists, they're dedicated to convincing you that dinosaurs lived long before man. Because what they have to do, they're like salesmen, evolutionary salesmen. They have to sell you the story, the fairy tale. The fairy tale that comes right out of SpongeBob La La Land. That pine trees, whales, and dinosaurs are all related through common ancestry. So. If dinosaurs were actually alive within the last few thousand years, this theory of evolution, pond scum to people evolution, becomes highly unlikely. Now, dinosaurs to begin with, they're nothing more than reptiles that continue to grow in size. And most people that I talk to, most people that you will talk to, they seem to be unaware of the fact that reptiles never stop growing in size while they're alive. For example, as humans, we know that our noses and ears never stop growing. And same with mammals and most of the animal kingdom. They grow to a certain size, then stop growing. While they do get older, they don't get any bigger. But with reptiles, as I've stated earlier, they continue to grow in size until the day they die. Let's, let's take a tortoise that has lived over a hundred years. It's known and documented that they get to be the size of a bathtub. Imagine a tortoise that could live up to 500 years. They'd be the size of a garage. Now, when we actually examine dinosaurs, and if we look to the biblical record of history, say before Noah's flood, we know that man lived to be hundreds of years old. Methuselah, for example, lived to be 969 years old. And after the flood, when the lifespan of man was decreased based on the after effects of the flood, based on genetic entropy, the accumulation of low impact, deleterious mutations, the ages of man have dropped off. Take that back to a point of say least genetic entropy. Imagine if these animals had the ability to live that long as well. We know today that reptiles never stop growing in size throughout their entire lifetime. Therefore, picture a Komodo dragon, picture a gecko. What are they gonna look like after 500 years? Can you say dinosaur? Now, to not get into too much detail about the biblical evidence, let's look at the evidence of dinosaurs living with man in recent history. Because like I said earlier, it's overwhelming due to the countless artifacts, drawings, mosaics, carvings, depictions. You can see depictions of Brachiosaurus, Plesiosaurs, Pterodactyls, Triceratops, T-Rex, and many, many more. The question is for the evolutionists, if man didn't live with these creatures, how did artists throughout ancient history and in cultures all over the world happen to draw these animals to recreate these giant beasts was it just all coincidence that it turns out that they look nearly identical to what we see in the books about dinosaurs in museums today i've heard evolutionists say well they must have seen dinosaur skeletons back then too and that's how they were able to recreate them and draw them and it's not just a coincidence. They've seen the bone. But the thing is, this argument fails tremendously. And the reason why is that dinosaur skeletons, they're not just found lying on the ground intact, as if someone's gonna walk by, look down and see what that dinosaur looked like. The bones are always fragmented, they're separated, and they're embedded deep within the ground or within the rock. And most of them are missing. Occasionally, yes, you might find a piece of a single bone, say, sticking out of a rock here and there. But at the end of the day, 
that's pretty much all that we actually find. And if you actually think about this logically, what does logic say? That's all anyone in ancient history would have been able to find as well. And there's no way they would have been able to create that image of the entire animal, the entire dinosaur, without the entire skeleton. We know that the science of paleontology did not develop until the early 1800s. It's all rescue device after rescue device and post hoc, ad hoc explanations coming from the evolutionist side. This process of digging out and excavating dinosaur bones from, say, rock didn't begin until then. And as a consequence, the first complete skeleton of a dinosaur was not constructed until the 1800s. The word dinosaur, which everybody knows means, you know, great or terrible lizard, it didn't exist before 1841. That's when it was coined. But that doesn't mean dinosaurs didn't exist. It just means that these giant animals, these reptiles, these creatures weren't called dinosaurs before 1841. This is what logic dictates. They were called dragons. And what do we see? Thousands of dragon legends from cultures all around the world. Dragon sightings have been documented and recorded throughout history by eyewitnesses. They've been part of all sorts of legends and cultures all around the earth, from China to England to everywhere. And as I said earlier, there's even over 20 references to dinosaurs in the Bible. But of course, if the word dinosaur wasn't coined until 1841, they were not called dinosaurs, they were called dragons, since the word didn't exist yet. This all fits perfectly within a biblical base model. So how did these people two, three thousand years ago, how did they know almost exactly what dinosaurs look like? Listen guys, there's only two options. Either logically, they saw the dinosaurs with their own eyes, or they could have constructed the skeletons. There's not really a third logical option that won't sound ridiculous at the end of the day. So if we actually look into these explanations, and we look at, say, civilizations throughout history, to think that they actually knew exactly what dinosaurs looked like in detail by just seeing, you know, dinosaur skeletons, at the end of the day, that's not logical. Because as I said earlier, the first skeleton was not even put together until the 1800s. And there's not as many dinosaur skeletons as you'd think. The fossil record, we can look to paleontologists Dr. Kurt Wise, he's got a PhD in geology from Harvard University, he'll tell you, this is confirmed. This is fact that only 0.0025% of the entire fossil record consists of more than a single bone of vertebrate animals. And after nearly hundreds of years, 200 years to be exact, of paleontology, we have now been able to come up with just a few fossils of large dinosaurs. And there's almost no evidence in history of previous civilizations digging and excavating bones, let alone creating entire skeletons as some of these evolutionary apologists would have you believe. But remember, they need to hang on to that primary assumption that ponds come to people evolution is true. At best, if you wanna give them something, someone in history maybe found an occasional large bone shard, say in the ground, and tell their buddies, Okay, this belonged to some type of big animal, but it's not logical at all. As a matter of fact, it's illogical to believe that they could, with their imagination, guess exactly what, say, a Tyrannosaurus or a Brachiosaurus or a Triceratops would look like, or any other dinosaurs for that matter. I could go on and on and on. Plesiosaurs, for example. You know, how would they know that these depictions were identical? to what they actually look like, the ones that we see in these artworks, the cave drawings, the sculptures, the mosaics, and writings. Writings that we can go into thoroughly throughout history and from many different cultures around the world. Usually, and what it is about legends, thousands of legends is they come from a common source. Ask yourself, whether you're a believer, you're on the fence, or you're a critic, if these dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago before modern man evolved, and the first dinosaur skeleton was then not excavated and constructed until the early 1800s? How did human artwork throughout all of history just so perfectly manage to come out and depict several types of dinosaurs that look absolutely identical to the dinosaur depictions we see in the science books today? 
It's a simple answer, guys, as everything is. Start with a biblical-based model, a biblical-based assumption. What's the answer? They drew what they saw with their own eyes. There is one creature remembered in the legends of almost every human culture that's ever existed. A creature depicted with remarkable similarity by the Chinese, the Aztecs, even the Inuit who live in a frozen land where no reptiles are found. Even they have stories of this animal, the dragon. Cultures from different continents People who had no contact with one another, yet all of them have stories describing the same mythical animal. Could it be these stories were more than myth? What if we discovered that this creature that haunts our imagination had once been real? This is a 2,000-year-old Roman-built thermal baths that is right between Bacali and Pozzuoli, west of of the Bay of Naples in southern Italy. Um, I've been here multiple times, but I'm here for a very specific reason. But last time I was here, before Christmas with a friend of mine, I thought I've seen pretty much so everything here, but we found this chamber that had quite a bit of the original stucco inside and there was something that was very interesting. I couldn't see because the light was so bad and I didn't have a flashlight. So today I'm back to photograph it. Basically all of the stone that you see here, all of this would have been covered in plaster. All of these bricks all would have been covered in plaster. Just like this right here. It would have all been covered in mosaics and all kinds of artwork. What we found was some original plaster, like plaster of Paris sculpture work that had de depicted what looked like a man riding a dragon or a dinosaur or something. It was in an odd location on the ceiling. Um, and I'm going to go back and photograph it right now. I brought a bunch of cameras and lights and tripods and we're going to go see if we can actually get some pictures of what that was. I swear it, it, when I first saw it, it looked like it was a man riding a T-Rex. So let's go take a look. Well I've had to walk around most of the site but I managed to find the location of this room. And there's some good light in here. Certainly more than the last time I was here. And we're gonna take some pictures. Here, here we go. All right, so you can see some of the roof here. And the item I'm interested in is over, over on this side. Jesus, dude. That does look like a guy riding a f***ing dragon. Or a T-Rex or something. I'm gonna get some better lighting. It's hard to see, but it looks like he's riding a fucking T-Rex. the hell? A 67-year-old shepherd looking for one of his animals stumbled upon what could be one of the most astonishing discoveries of modern archeology. span The man noticed a barely visible entrance to a group of caves covered with prehistoric art depicting many humans and animals, but also a few live dinosaurs bringing many questions concerning the chronology of the extinction of these giant creatures. Abdul, a paleontologist, explains, At first we thought these were modern animals, but carbon dating analysis revealed they were in fact older than the rest of the drawings. It seems that these were probably the first images drawn in the cave, and they seem to relate to the earliest period of development of the settlement. These amazing work of arts combined with the dinosaur bones discovered on the spot, bring an all new perspective to the theories concerning the disappearance of the dinosaurs about 65 million years ago. It now seems plausible that humans could have actually coexisted with these incredible creatures. These prehistoric pictograms seem to illustrate dinosaurs being hunted by humans. 
some have suggested that it could mean that humans are actually to blame for their extinction. This is certainly a revolutionary new perspective and it would certainly be hard for many historians and archaeologists to accept. Steve Bruchat, a paleontologist at the University of Edinburgh said, Dinosaurs had been around for over 150 million years when the asteroid hit, and were doing quite well up until that fateful day. If the asteroid hadn't hit Earth, he has no doubt they would have kept thriving. 